what are your thoughts on on where we're at with that? One from a home home automation or home assistant perspective specifically, but two just in general, right? Like where how do you think running that locally at home with I don't know one of those new uh, Nvidia boxes or or you know something with a solid GPU? How does that compare to a ChatGPT or a Claude or something something like that? I think it's actually we're we're not in a bad spot because. If you're running a job like in Home Assistant, that's going to be very focused. Like, I just want you to analyze these two things. Like, tell me if clothes are on the line. That's it. That's not a difficult task. It's 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 complicated enough where an AI would have to have some kind of vision. It'd have to do some kind of advanced, um, uh, whatever, inference to figure it out. But um, any kind of generalist thing like that you would use ChatGPT for or Claude, like asking it big questions, that's where a local AI isn't quite there. We don't have the um, the amount of memory or context to be able to support that. But small things, little little runs like that, I think are actually in a really good spot. And I mean, goodness, you can run you can run small AI models on a Raspberry Pi with an AI hat. Those work really well. Mm. Um, that new NVIDIA box. It's like four thousand dollars, so I wouldn't recommend that. However, you can you can run a small gaming machine. You can you can buy um, one of those new specific AI boxes. I think Framework has a new AI. Um, uh, what, what's the AMD AI chip they have inside? Of it. Like it's it's impressive what we can do now. But if you want some serious AI work, if you want to be at the cutting edge, you got to go with the flagship models. Um, but as far as like home automation, I think we're, we're pretty good. Like you don't have to connect to the cloud unless you're doing some really crazy stuff. You, it doesn't take a lot of hardware to do what you're wanting to do yeah. in the home. Yeah. And, and what are some of your favorite models for, I mean, I mean, again, two, two faceted, right? One for just general use kind of thing. Uh, and one for, if you were to run a uh, home assistant against it. And, and I mean, both from a local perspective. Yeah, so like a, a llama, llama three, and I think it's llama three dot three is one of my favorites. I think I forget I forget my models with llama because they they come out. This three dot three has a, a seven B, and then three dot two has a seventy B. I forget. Um, but I'm fortunate enough to where I can run a seventy B model, um, which is pretty pretty big. Uh, but I can run it on Terry, who's got two uh, dual forty nineties. So that's actually what I run often for when I'm doing inference. If I'm talking to Terry, and that's his AI model for voice, I'll use that. Um, for smaller things, and I'll have to look back at my Olama config. Actually, I can probably pull it up right now because I forget the model names like you would not believe. Yeah, oh, who yeah, keeps track of them? They change every month or every week, but by the sounds of it. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a it's a lot, but we're they're, again they're they're getting better. I, I'm kind of out of the loop as far as like two weeks now. I haven't looked, but they've come out with some new stuff. I think um one of Ch uh, China's China's Twitter. Yeah came out with their own recently, which is apparently really good. Um, but I keep seeing things where the local models, the, the financial model behind them isn't sustainable. Like they're never going to be as good as the, the frontier models because there's not like any monetary incentive for them to make them greater and greater for us, um, if that makes sense. Mm. Um, let's see what I got here all on my list. Oh, this is general. like a, a, a real network chuck video right here. He's just going into the terminal. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I pen out and start drawing. Um, yeah, so uh, Gemma, Gemma 3 is really good okay. from Google. Google's open source model. I love that. Quinn 2.5, 7B is really solid. And then people are going to hate me for saying this, but DeepSeek R1 is really good. As long as you run it locally, don't expose it to the cloud. I know people are kind of weird about that. But it's, it's a good reasoning model. It's solid. Um, so all, all those are pretty good as far as like general things, um, small runs. Um, I love using the lava models for um, uh, uh, the, uh, the be able to see images and things. Yeah. Vision models. That's what I'm, I'm thinking of. Yeah. You know, even Llama has a vision model. It's pretty good now too. Yeah. I heard that. Now you're running these locally um, on a pretty substantial rig by the sounds of it. Mm -hmm. Do you find that you get better response times with Terry. Like I know one of my frustrations with the voice PE connected up to open AI or something is, you know, say, talking to Jarvis and then having to wait what seems like an eternity for a response back because it's, you know, streaming down a response from open AI. You can do that. I'm guessing all locally mm -hmm. without the internet. Do you find yeah. a very quick response? Yeah, it's pretty quick. And of course it depends on the size of the model, because I mean, if you, if you're running a 70 B model, it's going to take a minute. 
Um, if I run like an 8B model, he's really dumb. I'm not going to lie. He's pretty stupid when you talk to him, but it's really <laughs> fast. Like he's a fast talker. Um, yeah. Yeah. I would say 70B is probably on par with the speed you might get to the cloud, but an 8B model, dude, it's snappy. Um, it's just mm. right there. Um, yeah. The latency is nothing. And uh, it's not having to think very hard. And you can tell. Yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> so what are some like the, when you say it's not smart at all, what, can you give like an example of how dumb it would be? Like, like if, so this is where it really hurts is, um, it because the context window is not very big and I have a ton of devices in my house. I'm like, mm. how many lights are on? And be like, oh, there's like three lights. No, no, there's not. There's like there's like right. three lights. You're an idiot. Or I might be like, um, can you can you check the temperature of my server room? And it might be like, there is no server room. I'm like, yes, yes, there is. Yes, there is. Check again. Oh, you're right. It's 95 degrees. That's not it. That's not even right. Oh, you're right. I don't know what I was talking about. Like, it's just hallucinations and guesses and it, it can't context. So it doesn't know. But if I load up a 70B model, it can hold more of that. If I devote more of uh, more VRAM to it, it'll be better. I think even in Home Assistant, you can control the, the context window and you can control if it's fully loaded all the time or not. Um, that definitely helps. Um, but also, I sometimes I run ChatGPT because I'm like, I don't feel like messing with it right now. I don't care. I don't care if OpenAI knows that I turned on a light yesterday. I don't care about that. <laughs> so just, I'm going to do it. Um, but yeah, overall, it's pretty good. <laughs> 